Hi, in this short video, I'd like to give you a quick demonstration on how to extract bottom-up models of a DC-DC converter circuit using model Zen. This example is actually part of our tutorial named xmodel underscore DC-DC. So if you'd like to follow this demo, you can first copy the tutorial directory, go into the xmodel DC-DC subdirectory, source a set of script depending on your shell type, and launch Cadence Virtuoso. The top level cell view of the DC-DC regulator example is located in the DC-DC comb circuit library with the cell name DC-DC underscore buck. At this top level, the DC-DC regulator is made of a buck converter stage, of which output is regulated by a pulse width modulator based controller. Let's take a look at this buck converter first. This buck converter is made of two power switches, driving an output load resistance through an inductor capacitor filter. Let's go into this gate driver cell. This gate driver is made of logic gates and buffers that drive large capacitive loads at the power switches with non-overlapping pulses. Now, let's try to extract a bottom-up model for this gate driver. There are various kinds of model Zen properties you can set on the schematic to control the way model Zen generates the models. For example, knowing that this input SW and output P and N propagate digital values, we can set the signal types of these pins as XBIT so that model Zen would generate a model with the XBIT type input and output ports. Now, click this icon to run model Zen. Model Zen first extracts the spice netlist from the circuit and opens this dialog window asking for your confirmation. When you click OK, Model Zen will then start analyzing the netlist, run characterization on each of the devices, and generate the final model. The generated model gets imported back into the Cadence database into a view named XModel. Let's open it to see what the models look like. Model Zen by default generates a structural model. And you can see that the gate driver model has a set of logic gates and buffers, just like in the original circuit. And each logic gate and buffer is described using the circuit primitives of X model. And as we wanted, the input port SW and the output port N and P are declared as X bit types and models and has inserted these proper connect primitives to convert them into the X real type signals internally. Let's move on to the buck converter cell and generate its model. Again, you can simply click this icon to run model Zen. And the generated models is imported into an X model view of the same cell. This time, let's try to run a simple simulation with this buck converter model we just generated. Here's a test bench that feeds a 1 MHz 50% switching pulse and a 1.2 volt supply into a buck converter. What we expect is an output voltage close to a 0.6 volt. Let's run the simulation by opening this X model test bench editor, generating its netlist, and launching the X model simulation. Once the simulation is done, open the X wave waveform viewer to check out the results. The output voltage that starts from 0 volt approaches to a steady state value of 533 millivolt 
And when you zoom in, you can observe these output ripples due to the switching action of the buck converter. This 533 millivolt output is actually not quite what we wanted. And this is why we need to close a feedback loop with a controller. So now let's take a look at the controller next. This is a PWM based controller made of a PID controller filter followed by a pulse width modulator, in short PWM. The PID filter monitors the error between the output voltage and reference voltage and drives the control input to the pulse width modulator in a way that it can reduce the error. In this example, this PID controller is implemented as an op-amp based active filter. On the other hand, this pulse width modulator, the PWM, is realized as a ramp generator followed by a comparator. The ramp generator is basically a relaxation oscillator generating a periodic ramp, which is then sliced at a variable threshold set by this input in to modulate the duty cycle of the output pulse. Again, let's set the signal type of this output to X bit since we know it's a digital type signal. We can also set its conversion level using some other signal names as well as using fixed values. This PWM is an interesting circuit by itself so let's try generating its model and run a simulation with it. I have this test bench, TBPWM, and this test bench gradually varies the input from 0.7 down to 0.2 and observes the output pulse. Now let's run the simulation. And open the waveform viewer when it's done. You can see that as the input gradually changes from 0.7 down to 0.2, the duty cycle of the output pulse width gradually varies as well. Now, we're ready to generate the models for the whole DC-DC regulator. Simply go to the top level and click the Models N icon to run Models N. You may have noticed that the model generation was finished fairly quickly. It is because Model Zen knows how to recycle the characterization results from the previous runs. We have a test bench named TB underscore DCDC. And this test bench feeds a reference voltage at 0.6 and observes the output. The simulation takes about 8 seconds. And you can see that the output voltage V out now settles to a voltage that's very close to 0.6 at this time, thanks to the feedback loop of the regulator. You can also observe the waveforms of the switching pulse, as well as the control voltage going into the PWM. This simulation was fairly fast, but we can make it faster by modeling some part of the circuits as functional models. User Defined Model, or the UDM interface of Model Zen, provides an easy way to map any part of the circuit into a predefined functional model. The Pulse Width Modulator is an easy candidate to try applying UDM as it can be described as a block that modulates the duty cycle of its fixed frequency output as a function of the input. To map this PWM circuit to a UDM, select the instances that make the PWM and select a pop-up menu, Models and Properties. Or you can just press the shortcut key, Control Q. When the dialog pops up, select the model PWM V1 and define the mapping between the nets on the schematic and ports of the model. 
and also define this parameter which controls the range of characterization. When you press OK, this mapping information is now stored on the schematic. Now, you can generate a functional model from the circuit using the same flow of model Zen. So we go to the top level again and regenerate the model for the whole DC-DC regulator. Inside the model of the DC-DC underscore buck, we can find the model for the PWM block. The generated model for this UDM now contains a UDM instance instead of the circuit primitive seen before. And the definition of this UDM follows next, which describes the PWM circuit as a piecewise linear function primitive, followed by a duty to clock primitive. These numbers describe the voltage to duty cycle characteristics and the frequency of the PWM output, which are extracted from the SPICE simulation run by model Zen. Let's run the same test bench using this new model. The simulation now takes only 4 seconds, which is 2x faster than using structural models only. This UDM interface of Model Zen gives a simple way to speed up your simulation by mapping only a few critical circuits to functional models. In summary, Model Zen is a tool for automatically extracting bottom-up models from your circuits, and with the generated models, you can perform efficient verification of your circuits all in System Verilog. If you'd like to learn more, please visit our website, www.scientificanalog.com. Thank you.